I uh, well, you know, it's the same barrel. You're right, it is the same barrel. And I know you like to shoot these muzzleloaders now. I mean, well, I like the handguns and the rifles. I'll shoot a muzzleloader occasionally, but you don't hardly shoot anything else anymore, do you? Don't, you don't need more than one shot. What's that shot you using? Five. Five. Yeah. So five or four to be The sweet fragrance of bluegrass has just turned to the smell of burnt black powder. And as the smoke clears, the gobbler target comes into view, completely you know riddled what? with say, pellets. Muzzleloader pro Greg Ritz and hunting expert Larry Wysoon are both happy with the performance. It's actually yeah, pretty know, unusual for both Greg and Larry to be hunting in camp together. But it's spring, the start of a new year, and a brand new hunting season. Larry and Greg are great friends and began hunting together several years ago. But their careers in hunting have taken them somewhat separate directions. Well, like a spring turkey hunting. You're not spring turkey hunting, you're deer hunting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Would you look at this? Bird? One of the advantages of spring turkey hunting, or one of the things I like to do, is, you know, scout good deer hunting territory. You know, when you get on a bird and you walk and call, walk and call, or sometimes if a bird gets moving, It'll take you in an area sometimes you never thought about going to set up to whitetail hunt. And it's kind of a real therapy for me, just kind of walking around, uh, looking at the new growth, you know, smelling the, the smells of spring. It just brings that, you back, your whole life back into focus. I like those big tracks. It's amazing how guys who live so far apart and come from such different backgrounds can become such close friends. Larry Wysoon grew up in the land of stickers and cactus briars. Uvalde County, located in southwest Texas, covers 1,588 square miles of prime mega buck real estate. And to any youngster exploring the mesquite along the Nueces River, the desire to be close to nature consumes everyday life, a desire that continues to this day. I'm often asked, as, you know, you've been hunting a long time, when did you start hunting? I don't remember, I'll be very honest. I do not remember. I started hunting with my dad and granddad when I was still in diapers. My dad ran a coon hound, so during the night, he'd pack me up and we'd follow the coon hounds and listen to the hounds. That's what I kind of grew up into. And beyond that, it created a situation within me where I knew I wanted, I knew what I'd want to do in life. And I knew the only way that I could do it, as much as I hated school, thought I'd died and gone to hell from the time I started first grade to the time I got out of college. But I needed that degree in wildlife management from Texas A&M to get into what I wanted to do. Over the years, I've had an opportunity to hunt lots of different species of animals. And a lot of them are fun. But I don't think there's anyone that's more fascinating, more aggravating, more 
almost any adjective that you can come up with in a white-tailed deer. And he's one of those animals that I have just the very utmost of respect for. Timing is so important in life, regardless whether you're hunting or whether it's life. And I happened to come along when this interest in white-tailed deer was very low, and then it started building. And I happened to be there when we started doing a lot of the management techniques. So that's just kind of created over a period of time. I always loved to read, loved to write. Later got into television, loved to hunt, got an opportunity to hunt a lot of different places because of what I did with the different magazines. So there pretty much is how I came about over a long period of time, but it was always there. I think that every individual, whether you suppress it or not, there's that innate desire to hunt. When it comes to rattling in big mature bucks, Larry Wysoon has earned his PhD in imitating the white-tailed deer. Can you guess what movie character Larry relates to the most? Find out when Game Trail's Kentucky Gobbler Hunt continues. This presentation of Thompson Center Arms Game Trails is brought to you by Bill Jordan's Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. By Robinson Outdoors Scent Blocker Plus Carbon Fabric Clothing. By Nikon, the trusted name in optics. By Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. By Hunter Specialties, for sportsmen, by sportsmen. And by Stony Point. Go the distance. When Game Trails pro Larry Wysoon is not rattling up whitetails in the Texas brush or editing copy for outdoor magazines, you'll find him kicking back to enjoy his favorite movie. I think one that had an influence a lot in terms of people of, of my generation, those people that are now in the 50s that are into hunting, was probably Jeremiah Johnson. But I think that was a, still, to me, was a very special movie in the fact that, that, that Robert Redford was involved and back then he was very much in terms of a hunter, especially in terms of, of creating the hawk and gun and the interest there was in muzzleloading and that there continues to be today. You can almost go back to, there were a few guys shooting a muzzleloader, but my God, it wasn't until Jeremiah Johnson movie came out that everybody wanted to shoot a muzzleloader. So I think that particular movie, if I were to pick one, that I can recall at the moment would probably be, well, had to be one of my favorites. Game Trails hunting pros Greg Ritz and Larry Wysoon are enjoying their first day of gobbler season and traveling the scenic rolling hills of Kentucky is a breath of fresh air. Spring in Kentucky is beautiful and the eastern turkeys that live here have made a dramatic comeback. Only a few years ago, there were very few turkeys in these river bottoms. And now, the tranquil morning air is interrupted by the thunder of gobbling longbeards. Greg Ritz loves the outdoors. Having grown up in the Northeast where deer and turkey hunting has been a tradition for generations, the opportunities available to a passionate young hunter brought about a love of hunting that would grow with each trip to the woods. I'm 12 years old and where I was living, I had this vast wilderness to me at that age, a, a reservoir that was bow hunting only. And I got the bug early on in life, being in the woods, figuring out the strategy, putting the game together. And I was fortunate, only two months into my hunting career, I harvested my first doe. And I mean, it was just a complete rush. And since that time, I have just had a, had a unfulfilled passion. You know, every year I've got to get in the deer woods, I've got to get in the deer woods for a lot of reasons. I've had the great fortune to, one, make it my lifestyle. I mean, working for a gun company, being able to give back and enjoy all the stories from the people out there is an exciting opportunity. And two, I've had a chance to hunt all over North America for whitetails, which is a lot of things people don't get a chance to do. So I've really been blessed, but I never forget where I came from and the roots of hunting. And I've learned the persistence and the dedication it takes to hunt big whitetails. And you just don't give up, you go put the time in. Greg Ritz has turned his passion of hunting into a career. When Greg's not in the field, he's in the factory, working on improving the performance of muzzle-loading guns at the Thompson Center Arms Foundry in Rochester, New Hampshire. It's here that the Hawken guns were built for the Jeremiah Johnson movie. 
and where the highest quality muzzle loaders in the world are cut from a billet of hardened steel. Designed by expert craftsmen, tooled by professional die cutters, assembled by hunters, and field tested by Greg Ritz. When you get to turkey hunting, when they come off the roost, these birds are crazy. They have no earthly idea where they're going or why they're going there. And they never do the same thing twice, period, end of story. The only hope that you have is finding a bird that is hot to find a hen. In other words, he's out on the run and he's, and he's being vocal. If a turkey isn't vocal, you're in trouble. During the day of Jeremiah Johnson, his 50 caliber Hawkins muzzleloader depended upon flint to ignite the powder and fire the projectile downrange. Today, muzzleloading firearms have evolved into precise and reliable shooting machines. Muzzleloading pro Greg Ritz shares his passion for the sport when Game Trail's Kentucky Turkey Hunt continues.